That was something. You're welcome. All right.
praises and honor to you, Lord God. We are so blessed to be here and to be able to worship you freely. We know that there's millions of people who can't do that around the world. We just uh, pray for those people and pray uh, for the, the people here that don't know you. closer to you each other. We're so thankful for how you bless us. And we just ask you to continue blessing our lives and give us strength and give us a heart for Jesus and a heart for the people that we come in contact with each other. We praise you and thank you for all. In Jesus' name we pray. It's all way this morning. Uh, that didn't sound too convincing. <laughs> Thank you guys for sharing uh, in song. We have been looking at uh, the events of David and Goliath uh, in Scripture. It's found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. If you would take your Bibles and turn with us there this morning. Uh, just as a reminder, we're looking at the practical faith of God's presence. How is uh, the faith that we have, how does it practically show up uh, in our lives? And what we're going to examine today uh, is the... Part of the events where David takes the five stones, and uh, that's what he has. And what we want to take a look at uh, in, in reference to this is how that God has already provided for you and for me everything that we need to be able to serve him in a better way. Sometimes we, we feel like, well, I can't talk to somebody about the Lord. I, I can't invite people to church. I can't do this or I can't do Listen, God has provided and brought you into this house this specific house, God's church, to be used in this time, specifically for His glory. And so we want to take a look at that. We've been looking at the challenges uh, that we saw to our faith, how that sometimes, you know, doubt creeps in. Uh, when things happen in our life, circumstances, we doubt creeps in a little bit. We don't trust God, uh, perhaps, the way that we should. And, and certainly the enemy, Satan, does everything he can, does he not, to try to defeat us. And to make us feel like we're not worthy or we can't be used of God uh, and so on. Last week we examined uh, the idea of just not really focusing on the enemy as much. But let's focus on, on God and, and who he is and what he can do in our lives. We're going to be reminded today uh, that God chose David specifically for this time. And I believe that God has chosen each one of us specifically for this time in this body of believers as a church. And if we can understand that, and if we can, we can realize that God has you specifically here for this time uh, in, in history, and this time in the life of the church, it's very important. And so all of us need to understand that God uh, wants to use us, and if we can somehow see from David what he did uh, to make his efforts successful uh, as he defeats Goliath, uh, I believe it could also help teach us. Uh, how the Lord could use us for His glory. So, again, as I said in today's passage here in 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, we're going to be down at verse 32 in just a few moments. Uh, we want to examine uh, just exactly how God uses us and He wants to use us for His glory. Before we do that, let me just, let me just encourage you with something that I, I think is very important uh, as, as a believer. And that is this. We have to, in our, in our life as a Christian... We have to get to the point where we don't compare ourselves to other people. Because far too often, the reason people don't serve or the people don't share their testimony is, well, you know, I really, I really can't do that that well. Um, you know, some folks will say all kinds of things when it comes to serving the Lord, and, you know, I just can't do that. Well, if I could just sing a little bit better, then maybe I could be an IOP or justify it. Or I could be in the choir. If, 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 I, could just, if I could just do it a, a little bit better. Or if I had a little bit more self-confidence, I could get together with other people and pray out loud. We say, oh, you know, I just, I just can't do that. The problem is we want to compare ourselves to God. or not to, We don't compare ourselves to somebody else. 
I'll use this example of prayer because we've been doing our prayer times on uh, Sunday mornings. And we, we only have one more scheduled in this time slot. So if you haven't been here, uh, come out at 945. Uh, just, you know, praying in, in spirit with other people. Uh, if God leads, we certainly pray out loud. But there have been people who have never prayed publicly who in that group have been praying out loud. And you know what a blessing that is for, for, for all of us? Because sometimes we think, well, you know, I can't pray like, like Pastor Dave prays in public. You know, it, oh, it just seems like it's so easy. Right? I can't pray like Dan just did after ILP. Listen, we, we have to stop comparing ourselves to other people. That, that, that is one of the things that defeats. You know, you heard Christian say, well, if I could just make a little bit more money, then I would tithe. You know, the scriptures say it the other way around. <coughs> tithe, do what God has called you to do in that area, be faithful in that area, and then he'll bless in the rest of your life. You see, we, we, we want to we wanna get to the point, I think, too many times, we just... We just want to compare ourselves. If, 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 if I do this, if I do that, uh, you know, then, then I'll better be able to serve the Lord. I'll better be able to do something and so on and so forth. Listen, it's enticing to say that, you know, if I get a better job, if I live somewhere else, if I had a bigger house or whatever, you know, I can really do what God wants me to do. Let me share with you something. If you have your Bible, you can hold your place there in 1 Samuel. I, I think, let's go look at 1 Corinthians real quick. I don't want to spend a lot of time here uh, this morning because it's something we've not only talked about, uh, but uh, Lord willing, this is going to be a study that we're going to be doing in the 930 hour uh, sometime here in the future, uh, if not probably by fall time. I want you to notice what 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says. And uh, beginning in verse 4, we've, we've mentioned this before, but Christians, the, the, the Lord says there are diversity of gifts so there are different types of gifts, but of the same spirit. There are difference of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. Now I want you to catch verse 7. All right, I have this underlined in my Bible. It says, the manifestation of the spirit, and then this next phrase is so important, is given where? To each one. For the profit of all. Listen, God, don't compare yourself to somebody else. Don't compare yourself to what this person can do, what that person can do. Um, you know, if, if God has gifted you in some area, and he has, you need to use that for God's glory. And you need to be willing to do it, even though you might make a mistake or you might falter along the way. Believe me, uh, as a pastor... I, I fail in a lot of things, all right? I've shared this illustration with you before, but I have been warned that I am never allowed to touch anything electrical in this church. Now, you want to know why that is? Because one day, our sign out front was not working, and it has a timer on it. So I decided, oh, well, I'll just change that. You know, that's no big deal. So I went in there, and I took the screw that controls the timer and I turned it off. The only thing is I turned it a little bit too far and when I did, it touched the uh, side of the timer and it just, well, it made a loud noise. And so it hasn't worked since. And I was warned because that's not my area of expertise. All right? Now, I was trying to do something that was good but it didn't work. So I've been warned. But, but I can't compare myself to, to a chub who figured out what was wrong with our light out here, all right? There's no way that I could do that. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to touch anything like that. But listen, the Holy Spirit has somehow gifted you, and you, you, you can't compare yourself to somebody else, you know, because somebody else does it a little bit better than you, so you don't do it at all. Could you imagine in this, in this instance of David's life, if David was a little shepherd boy, right? Okay, he was no big giant uh, warrior. For Could you imagine if he spent his time envying the soldiers, looking at the soldiers and saying how strong they were, you know, all of the things that they had done? He would have never done anything. And there are far too many Christians that are that way. David, as we're going to see in this particular account, David focused on what he had. What were the two things that he had besides his faith in God? He had a sling and 
five little stones. And God used that to take down Goliath. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. All right, let me uh, read. If you would follow as I read, I'm going to read this particular passage this morning, and then we'll just draw quickly some uh, thoughts from it uh, that would challenge us, I believe. Beginning in verse 32. David says to Saul, and remember up to this point, uh, he's, you know, Goliath is coming out and he's making fun of him and so on and so forth. And last week we saw David commanded him or talked to him about God's army. David says to Saul, verse 32, let no man's heart fail because of Goliath. I, your servant, will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you're not able to go up against the Philistine to fight with him. You're, you are a youth. And he's a man of war. David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both a lion and a bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied whom, church? The armies of the living God. Remember, Goliath kept coming out and saying, oh, you're just Saul's army. So Saul clothed David, verse 38, with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head, and he clothed him with a coat of mail, all of the armor. David fastened his sword to his armor. He tried to walk, for he hadn't tried them on before. He hadn't tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested these. So David took them off. And then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook. He put them in his shepherd's bag. It's in a pouch which he had, and his sling was in his hand, and he came near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him. He made fun of him. You see, he's not only just a youth. He's, he's, he's ruddy and good-looking, but he certainly can't fight against me. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with, with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. He's got some guts, doesn't he? Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give you the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And then you know, all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword or spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And so it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and he ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. He put his hand in his bag, took out a stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he, Goliath, fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. He struck the Philistine, he killed him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine. He took his, Goliath's sword, drew it out of his sheath, he killed him, cut off his head, with it, and when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Pretty cool story, isn't it? Pretty cool historical account. Listen, there are a lot of things in this passage, but I want to share just three things with you this morning that if, if you're gonna if you're gonna do what God wants you to do, if you can if you can understand God's call in your life, there are three things that I think you need to be be prepared for. The first one is very simply this. Christians, we have to stop having excuses for serving God and doing what He wants. We've got to block out the excuses. Look, at, if you would, at verse 32. David made the decision. And in verse 32, he says to Saul, I, your servant, will go and do what? Fight with this Philistine. David, David made the decision in his heart. Notice what Saul's response in verse 33. What does he say? Oh, you know, you can't do this. You're just a little guy. I don't know about you, but I'd probably think twice about going out to fight this ballistic. You know, because there, there's a part of us that's a little bit afraid when it comes to serving God. 
There's a part of us that when somebody, we're afraid if I'm going to share the gospel with somebody or I'm going to talk to them about my faith, we're a little afraid that they might ask a question we don't know the answer to. You ever been there? Sure. You know, or, or maybe God calls you to do something and you just aren't, you aren't willing to do it. Let me just share something personally with you uh, about my own life. All right, most of you know a little bit about our background and how God worked in my life. But um, when God called me into the pastorate, um, I, when he first started to begin to speak to me, um, I said, you know what, God, uh, you know what, I got, I got this master's degree in administration uh, to try to know how to organize things. And, you know, and, and you know I love to teach. Um, and, and God, you, you've given me that ability to be able to teach these kids. And I was a youth pastor, and you can share things with teenagers, so on and so forth. Uh, and, and I had already made a promise to Janet, my wife, that I would not become a pastor. So I had all these excuses. I had all of these things, you know, going on in, in my heart and in my mind. And I said, you know what, God, um, there's no reason to shift gears now. Um, you know, if you want to, if you want to move me to a larger school somewhere, or you want to use me in some other way, you know. But boy, being a pastor of a of a church, uh, that's a, that's a new vocation. And uh, you know, God said, "Look, I sent you to a Bible college so that you could learn the Bible. I sent you to a Bible college so that you could learn a little bit about education." And all of those types of things. But primarily I sent you so that you could learn the Bible. And now I want you to, to go and I want you to be involved with a local congregation. And I want you to just love them and to teach the word of God. And I had all kinds of excuses. David, in this particular passage, Saul's trying to discourage him, isn't he? Do you remember earlier when we talked about his brother? His brother was mad at him. He said, you can't do that. You can't be that. What, what did David do? He just blocked out the excuses. He blocked out all of these things. And, and, and maybe there was doubt, you know, going on. But he just blocked all of those things out. And he said, God told me, God called me to go take care of that Philistine. And even though nobody else may have been on his side or encouraging him, you don't read anywhere where the Philistines, you know, were doing things, and they were saying, or excuse me, the Israelites were saying, "Hey, let's have a little, uh, let's have a little pep rally to get David all ready for this." David was going out there, and he was going to do it on his own. Listen, you might be, you might be a believer, uh, and and you're just afraid to invite somebody to church. But what if they show up? Well, isn't that why you invite them in the first place? You know, what if, what, if, what if God's calling you and you have an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? I had three people this past week, three different people in our church this past week who said to me, you know what? I started talking to some people about going to church and they say that they're going to come. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. Don't stop. Just because somebody doesn't say yes or somebody doesn't come right away or whatever, don't stop inviting people and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with other people. Just don't, don't, just don't stop doing it. God will eventually use it for his glory. And I want to pause for just a moment because when God calls you to do something, you need to understand he's already prepared you to do it. Now, I want to pause because I feel like we, I need to just remind us of this. God also calls each one of us when it comes to salvation, when it comes to belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where it begins. Okay? And, and you can share your testimony. You may know a little bit about, you know, things of the Lord. But listen, it all begins with God's calling on your heart. There was a time in my life when, when God was working in my heart and I had not made a profession of faith. I had not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was working in my heart. And I responded to that call. And God gloriously saved me for his glory. Because I believed on him. That's where it starts. And if you're here today or you're watching online. And you have never come to the point in your life. Where you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You might, you might say, yeah, I know, I believe God. I believe there's a God. 
but I haven't, I haven't believed on him personally in my heart. Listen, my friends, that's the first call in your life. That's where it begins. And once God is working in your life, once you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, then he begins to work in your heart to help you to do what he wants to do. I remember my dear friend, uh, Mike Bulick, and I've shared this with you a couple times as an illustration, but, but, but Mike, you know, God was calling on Mike's heart to believe on him. And Mike said, well, you know, I don't want to leave my friends behind. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm just, and he had all kinds of excuses. And he used to tell me, he said, my knuckles used to get red holding on to the pew in church. I don't even know why he was in church. I don't know if Patty brought him or why he was there. He had some friends that brought him. And every time the preacher would preach and he'd be sharing the gospel, Mike had a hold of that pew. And he said, my hands, my knuckles would get red because I was holding on to the pew so hard. Why? Because God was calling his heart and saying, listen, you need to believe on me, buddy. Because if not, you die, you're going to spend eternity in hell. And eventually, Mike let go of the pew, and he walked down the aisle one Sunday morning, and God gloriously saved him because he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's a testimony. Okay? And if you're here today, and you're resisting the call of God, and you're like, listen, my friends, just stop making excuses. Stop resisting. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. Not only do you have eternal life, but then God will gloriously work in your life. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. That's what the scriptures say. Uh, your eternal destiny is at, is at stake. And, uh, you know, that's our, that's our concern for all of you. So, the first, just block out the excuses when it comes to serving God. You know, David, David uh, is, is certainly a good example. But then I want you to go down to verse 34 and see a little bit of the confidence that David had. And I would submit the second, the, the second idea is very simply this. Look at your past experiences Look at your life, all that, all that you've done in your life, uh, and, and learn from them and use those experiences for God's glory. That's what he wants to do. Notice verse 34, 35, 36. You notice David's illustration here? You know, what, what is he? Look at the confidence that he has. He talks about uh, killing a bear and killing a lion. Could you imagine, could you imagine verse 35? He, he gets a hold of this lion. And he, he says he grabs him, he grabs it by its beard, and kills it. You know, David had confidence, and he, he saw the confidence, and I want you to understand the confidence that David had. And, and especially at the end of verse 36, this is so important because David says, this confidence helps me to understand that I am going to do this against the enemy of the living God. He said, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to do what he has. He said, God delivered me before from the lion and from the bear, and he's going to do it all over again. Now, church, listen. Do, do we all sin? Do we all fail God? Okay. Now, we're confident that Jesus says he'll forgive us, right? God says, I'll, if you confess your sin, I'll, I'll forgive you for that. So it isn't a license to just keep sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning. But listen, if you failed God in some area of your life, you failed Him by sin or whatever the area of your life may be, please, don't be discouraged by that. Realize that God loves you and He cares for you. Ask for forgiveness and get up and go on for God's glory. If you've been failing God in some area of your life, whatever it may be, don't, don't feel like, well, you know, that's the end of the road. But you look at the past, your life experiences, and all of the things that have been going on, and you learn from them. Remember where you have been, and, and learn from it, and grow from it. Um, do you remember, let, let me just share with you, if you want to turn, you can. Uh, Genesis chapter 50. Um, verse chapters 37 to 50 of Genesis. If you have not... Uh, done a study on your own on the life of Joseph, let me encourage you to do it. We did it as a church uh, one time, and those chapters, chapters 37, that's a big portion of the book of Genesis. Uh, it deals with the life of Joseph. And Joseph, if, if you recall, was used by God. Uh, he was taken into captivity, and eventually God used him, if you remember, to deliver his whole family during the famine, so on and so forth. I want you to notice at the end of his account in Genesis chapter 50, beginning in verse 19, his brothers, if you recall, uh, Joseph would give them extra food and all these types of blessings and so on and so forth, and, and they, were, they were nervous. 
because Joseph had the power to basically throw them in prison uh, and so on. But he, he continues to help them. And in verses 19 and 20, I want you to notice something. And this is so true about you and I as part of the church family. Genesis 50, verse 19, Joseph says to his brothers, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? In other words, am I the one who judges you? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Now notice the next sentence. Very important. God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. This whole understanding of what David is and where you are, church, God put you in this church family today for this purpose, to be used of Him. Not to just be in the church, but to be part of what God has going for God. Here, here's Joseph. He's falsely imprisoned, all of these types of things, and yet he says at the end of, his, uh, at the, end of, of the accounts, he says, listen, I was here for this particular day. And I believe that every one of you, as part of the South High Church family, are here for specifically for this day to be used of God's glory in some way. And, and it's so important. Um, learn, learn from where you've been. Uh, this past week, um, a, a couple, I, I met with Gina and Todd, and I asked them if I could use their name this morning. And they were sharing their testimony about how God had brought them to a saving knowledge of Christ in their life. And both of them said something that was very interesting to me because it fits so well here. They shared where they had been in their life and the things that had happened to them in the past and how they learned. they've learned. learned from those experiences and God is now using them and they want to be used in this church family for God's glory. Listen, God put the two of them in this body of Christ so that they could be used at this particular time. And the experiences that they have in the past have all been used to help bring them in their faith to where they are today. Um, there's a young man sitting in our congregation this morning, uh, and I told him this this past week. Uh, as I was finalizing my notes and thoughts, um, it was the day that we put out the phone tree message, just kind of reminding you about the work day and the love offering, all those kinds of things. Well, the phone tree is a tremendous, it's a tremendous invention, but it doesn't like our computer, or our computer doesn't like it. And a lot of times when we go to do it, um, there's something that flashes up on the computer screen, basically tells me, ha ha, it isn't gonna work today. There's one guy in this church who every time that happens, I send him a text and uh, I say, Derek, phone tree's not working again. Can you fix it? Well, I, I, yeah, I'll be over to look at it. And then so he'll come over on his lunch break or whatever. And it probably takes him two minutes. I tried it one time and uh, I kind of got warned not to do it again because I, I almost, Fried something else that I wasn't supposed to. But I, I, just, I just want to share something with you. God put him in this church for times like that. You know, God put every one of us in this body of believers to be able to be used by God some way. And, and I can give you all kinds of illustrations, but it's just something that you need to understand. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2, Israel is reminded there, Moses is writing, and he reminds them of what God had already done in their life and how that was used then later on. And they remember all of those sins that God did. Listen, we can be discouraged because of things that are going on in our life or even in a church family's life. But listen, God uses everything in our lives to make us stronger for his glory. And even though sometimes it's, it's hard, it, it's hard, you understand that those things are there for God to use for His glory. So we, we all are here because God put us here, and you are in this time to be used by God, and you are already prepared, and you are being prepared for God to work. Look, if you will, in 1 Samuel again, back to verses 38 through 40. And in those three verses, we've already read them, Saul was trying to give him all of this armor, Okay, could you just picture there's this young shepherd boy and he's trying to put on these big heavy 
They, I told you a couple weeks ago how much they weighed. It was just unbelievable. And, and he's putting all of these things on, and David just basically says, look, you know, I can't wear all of this kind of stuff, so on and so forth. He, he's trying to fit him into a mold that he isn't. He's trying to fit him into this mold of a proper soldier. And David didn't need all of that. Don't try to fit yourself into a mold of somebody else who you aren't. What I mean by that is God made you as an individual for, your, for his glory. And you can, you can serve him and do things for God, share the testimony of Christ in a way that nobody else can. You know, some people have the ability, they can walk up to somebody on the street and, and just say, hey, let me tell you about God, and just start spouting the scriptures, and it's, it's easy to them. Some people don't want to hear that. They need, they need it a little bit different way. They need to have it presented in a different way. You, you need to understand, you don't fit into the mold of a preacher. You don't fit into the mold of, of an elder. You don't, you don't fit into the mold of somebody who's up here doing, for example, uh, IOP or adjustment. You don't fit into that mold. You have a different mold. And God is going to use you if you understand what he has already prepared you to do. A lot of times it's that servant, that person who's behind the scenes, so to speak, doing all kinds of things that nobody else really even knows because that's the way God prepared you. Don't feel like you have to fit into the mold of somebody else to be used of God. You, you and I are all individuals. You, you, have, you have what God has given you and you have in your possession all that you need to be used of God. And, and we need to do that. Do you remember, I'm sure you do, uh, do you remember the account? It's in Matthew chapter 14. We get verses 13 to 21 if you want to jot it down and look at it. Do you remember the account of the feeding of the 5,000? Do you? All right, with Jesus and the disciples. It says all of these people were there. All right, now uh, it says the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, in the scriptures, if you recall, it talks about feeding 5,000 men. Um, most scholars believe there's probably close to 20,000 people in this group. If you remember, and if you go back and check out that passage, here's what happens. The disciples come to Jesus, and they say, Hey, look, you know, you've been preaching, you've been teaching, these people are hungry. Let's, all, let's send them home, have them go home and get something to eat, and then they can come back, and you can teach them again. And Jesus says, No, uh, we need to feed them. And the disciples, you know, they start looking in their pocketbooks, and they realize they don't have a whole lot of cash. I said, well, how are we going to feed all of these people, Jesus? Here's Jesus' question. What do you have? Remember that? And their answer was? Are you with me? <laughs> what does he have? Five loaves? Two. Don't give him too many. He only had two. Jesus' question was, what do you have? And then he performs a tremendous miracle, right? You know, they have plenty to feed everybody. They have all these baskets left. It's interesting, he had 12 baskets left over. What does that tell you? Each one of them took one home? We're just making an assumption there, but I, I would imagine that's what it is. Here's the point. God has gifted us and put us in this church at this time so that we could be used for his glory in some way. So you, you need to find out what it is. You say, well, how do I find that out? Well, one, you just start serving God. You just make yourself available to God. You, 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 you go to, the, to me, you go to Todd, you go to, to people, leaders in the church. Hey, listen, how, what can I do? What, you know, David didn't need this armor. He, did, he, only, he had them five stones. He had the sling. He used what God had already given him. You don't have to go off to some Bible college to be a teacher of God's Word. It might help you, but if you study God's Word, you have the ability to talk. You can teach. Some of you are teachers, have been teachers in, in school for years. You already have that gift. God has already blessed you that way. Use that gift for His glory. 
Some of you have all kinds of abilities. We had guys out here yesterday, uh, and I didn't mention it earlier, but just what a what a blessing. The guys, we were supposed to be here from 9 to 11. We had everything finished by quarter after 10. They were working out like crazy, getting everything done and uh, taking care of the things that needed to be done. And you know what? It wasn't like that was some big, gigantic job, but you had to have some people that were willing to just do a little bit of labor. You know, and some of them said, hey, you know, we finished up what we had to do. And somebody looked around and said, you know what? This needs to be done, too. And I don't know why he asked me. I won't tell you his name. But he, asked, he asked me if it was okay if he stayed and trimmed a little bit. Really? <laughs> he can stay all day, you know. Here, here's the point. God, listen, God, is, God gave you something. He's gifted you to do something. He's given every one of us the ability to talk about our testimony, to be able to talk to somebody about Jesus. You don't have to be some great scholar. I met a man, uh, I was sharing this with the group, I, I won't tell you the, the, the specifics because of time, but I met a man uh, at Walmart the other night. I was over there trying to get some chlorine from my dirty pool. And, uh, I didn't, I, had, I didn't recognize him at all. And he started, oh, aren't you Pastor David? And I said, yeah. And I was standing on one side of a counter, he was standing on the other, and people were probably mad, we were holding the place up. We talked for 20 minutes. Started talking about all kinds of things. I had no clue who he was. And we started talking about all kinds of things, and this and that, we started talking about church, we started talking about families, and so I, eventually, yesterday I realized who it was. But anyway, um, you know, God, it was just a simple conversation. And, and we just talked. I said, you know what? What are you doing about church? You going to church? Nah, I'm, you know, I'm busy. I got my kids. And I said, listen, I said, I said, come on out to church. I said, you know, get, get back into things of the Lord uh, like you used to, so on and so forth. Because he had shared some things. Listen, church, don't, don't make excuses about sharing the gospel or about talking to people about inviting people to church, about serving God. You're not too old, you know, you're not too weak. There are things that you can do for God's glory. Okay, and do you believe that? I, I, I trust you do. And, and we, need to be, we need to understand this. Some of you might be here today and you're just in one of those loops of excuses or maybe distractions. Oh, I got too much going on, you know. I can't, you know, listen. Or maybe you regret something that's in your past. If God has, if you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, your sin is as far as what, church? The east is from the west. It's gone. Don't live in the past. You regret things, but you don't live there. All right? And, and you just continue to be used to God. Focus on God. Let him, let him do something. Maybe you've forgotten what God did with you in the past. Maybe you, you've forgotten how God brought you from point A to point B in your life. Don't just go to church and sit in a church and, and look at other people and say, I can't be like them, I can't. Listen, God has specifically put you here in this body of believers for his glory. And uh, if you're watching online and you know, I know we have a lot of people out of state and so on, God put you in that church where you're at to be used of God's glory. And, and you do that, you be used of him. You have everything you need. Uh, let's just focus on it. And listen, if you feel like you're, 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 you need some encouragement or whatever, that's what the church family is for. You know, that's what the rest of us are here for, to encourage you to, to go on to be used of God. So learn from David. Um, he didn't have a whole lot going for him, but he had God on the side, didn't he? And uh, he did great things for him. Father, just, just teach us. Uh, I pray from uh, this part of David's life, uh, might we learn from it, uh, and we'll give you the thanks and the praise for it in Jesus' name.